Hello and welcome back to PHP Basics. My name is Sean. Today we're going to take a look at some practical and impractical uses of for loops. It's really more of a tips and tricks video. Uh, there won't be any fancy classes or functions or connecting to any SQL databases or anything like that. Just good old fashioned procedural PHP. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what a for loop is, uh, it essentially works like this. Uh, you have a value, we'll call it uh, x, and x is going to equal 1, and x is also going to equal, be less than or equal to 10, and then we have to have some sort of what happens. So we'll say um, as long as 1 is less than or greater than 10, we're going to have x equals x plus 1, which is just going to increment the value each time that it goes through until it reaches 10. Or we can use the shorthand for that and just say x plus plus. So if I was to come in here and echo out just x and uh, throw a line break in there, then it's going to show us 1 through 10. Now if I was just to say x is less than 10, then it's going to show 9. So that's kind of how that whole thing works. So what kind of thing is this useful for? Well, most people use the for loops in this exact same way to run through a numerical set of numbers or values of some sort sequentially. And one of the first things that I thought of using this for whenever I learned for loops was drop down menus. So let's say uh, you have a login form, right? Um, we could have, uh, so you're putting in your, your date of birth, right? And you're selecting the year. You could say uh, for. x equals 2005 x is greater than or equal whoops greater than or equal to uh, we'll say 1950 we'll say x minus minus which means we're going to start at 2005 and work our way down so now if we echo out Uh, we'll just we'll just say X again, and then throw a line break. This is what we get: 2005, 2004, and all this. Well, all we really have to do is throw a couple select tags around this, and then change our content here a little bit. We'll just say option, and then we'll change this to closing option. And if we look at this again, now we have all these in a drop-down menu. So this would be a great place. Or even for the days of the month, uh, if you're putting in, you know, 1 through 31. We'll change this back to plus plus. Now we have 1 through 31. So it works really well in that regard. But let's think about what else we can use. And this is where the whole practical, impractical use thing comes in. I'm going to wipe out everything that I've got here and start all over. Let's say we had the days of the month. Now, of course, we could list 1 through 12 here, right? But what if we wanted to actually list the dates or the, the month names themselves? What we could do is we could create an array. So I could say months equals array. We can say January, February. You can see where this is going, right? Let me pause this real quick and I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so basically I have all of the months uh, listed right here in an array. Uh, if I actually make this full screen, it might look a little neater. Okay, so now what I can do is I can say for x equals 1. And we'll do pretty much the same thing we did before. x is less than or equal to 12. Then x plus plus. So it's still going to run through, but we're going to use these numbers here as references to the array. So now what I could say is I could echo months and then start with x and then do a line break. Let's see what this looks like. 
So it starts with February and goes through December, and then it says we have an undefined offset in 12. Well, that's because arrays start with 0. So if I go with 0 to 12, let's see what that does for us. All right, so that shows us January, but now we have an extra value. Since we're starting at 12, this has to, or starting at 0, this has to turn into 11, which is fine if we're just wanting to list the days of the month inside of a for loop. The problem is, look what happens whenever we actually try to make real HTML out of this. Uh, let's go down, and I'm going to copy this and get out of here for a moment. We'll say select and kill our select. And then paste this back in here and throw some tags around it. Okay, so we now need to turn this into an option. And we'll give the name equals X. Because it has to have a name if you're actually using this in a form. And we'll close that option there. Okay, so now let's see what this looks like. So now we have January through December inside of our drop-down menu. There's a little problem, though. If I look at my source code, you can see my option name is 0 for January, and it's 1 for February, and so on and so on. Well, that's kind of a problem because there is no 0 month, and if you're programming this into a database or you're actually creating a login form that's going to throw off your timestamp and your timestamp needs to be numerical so what can we do to fix that well how about we put in a dummy variable for january or the zero we'll say just put this in and see what happens in fact let's change this back to 12 because now we have that extra value now let's see what happens okay so now we have a blank spot but we now have January through December let's see what uh, see what things are looking right now okay so we still have this zero here we want to get rid of that zero well how do you do that well that's easy let's just start at one let's take a look at what we have now so now we have January through December without that extra line let's take a look at our source code here so now we have January is one and December is 12 so that's a pretty cool use um, now you could have taken the time to manually put this all into HTML, but this just seems a whole lot cleaner whenever you go into looking at how many lines of code you're actually using. So uh, it's probably a little bit faster to do it this way. So now let's look at one of the impractical and one of the more fun, fun ways. Now this is called nested for loops. And the way that this works is we're going to put a for loop inside of a for loop and see what we come up with. I'm going to clear this out. All right, so let's say for x equals 1, x is less than or equal to 10, x plus plus. Let's see here. Let's try it. I'll tell you what we can do. Let's do a table. I'm going to say table, we'll give it a border of 1. Kill this down here. All right, so inside of this for loop, we're going to echo out a column. Let's call it tr. Then we're going to end that. All right, so inside of this for loop and inside of this column or this row, we're going to create another for loop, basically creating x and y coordinates. So if I say for y equals 1, and y is less than or equal to 10, then y plus plus. Inside of here, we can echo out a, a column. And we're going to do a little math inside of here. Let's concatenate this. I can say x times y. Back this up a little bit just so you can see what it's doing. Alright, so essentially we're basically using 1 through 10 to create columns. I'm sorry, rows. And then inside of that we're creating tables. 
or gosh, columns. And if you haven't caught on by now, we're multiplying the rows by the columns. Uh, let's see here what we got wrong. What row is this? Line three. Oh, forgot my variable. There we go. We've created a multiplication table. Two times two equals four. Three times three equals nine. Six times seven equals 42. So that's a pretty handy little useless uh, functionality of for loops. But it should get you involved and show you kind of how these work a little bit more. So uh, like I said, some practical uses and some impractical uses. Uh, you can probably make this just a little bit cleaner. We'll say a line equals middle. We'll make our cell padding a little bit wider. Equals three. Let's see what that looks like now. A little bit cleaner. Everything's centered up. But anyway, hope this has helped you out. If you like it, let me know. If you didn't, uh, let me know that too. I'll focus on some other things. But I'll see you guys soon. And uh, remember, like I always say, try to stay creative. Peace.